Good morning and welcome to you all. Whether you're joining us from the living room, the kitchen table, snuggled up in bed or from across the world, you're very welcome this morning to our family service. I also want to give a word of thanks to Grace who opened up our service this morning with that wonderful piece on the piano somewhere over the rainbow. Of course, the rainbow in these recent weeks has become synonymous with our carers and frontline workers. Many of us have been joining in with the clap for carers every Thursday night. And although it has officially finished, we want to encourage you to continue to remember all our frontline workers in your prayers. And what a wonderful reminder at the beginning of our service. So thank you, uh, Grace, for that. As we begin our service, just a few announcements to highlight some of the opportunities that are happening in the church life over these days. First of all, this would be uh, around the time of year when we have our Children's Day service. Of course, because of COVID-19 restrictions, we can't do that. But we want to have a focus this morning in our family service, especially on the children of our parish. And you'll see that throughout our service, as many uh, children are involved in a variety of ways throughout the service. But we also want to highlight this morning the work of Sunday Light. We're very thankful to our Sunday Light leaders as they have worked uh, very busily over these last couple of months in providing uh, opportunities for our children to continue to be discipled. And so every week, Sunday Light will have produced uh, some material and resources and a little video that goes up on YouTube. So we thank all our Sunday Light leaders for that. And we would encourage you, uh, particularly parents, grandparents, to share those videos with your children and grandchildren and encourage them um, to keep studying and keep using those opportunities to be discipled. Uh, we also want to highlight a number of opportunities for uh, the bigger children amongst us, uh, for the grown-ups. Uh, throughout these last couple of weeks, we have been running a number of courses. The first course that we want to highlight that has been run by our own Jim Fleming on behalf of the diocese is the Alpha course. Uh, and I'm sure still uh, not too late to jump on board with that if you want to. Also, we've been running some Zoom Bible studies uh, on a Tuesday and a Wednesday evening. If you would like to be involved in that, it's still not too late. There's always that opportunity to come on board and a great opportunity it is. The material is material that has been produced by the Bible Society and it's very encouraging and thought provoking and the opportunity to come together on Zoom to discuss our reflections has been very encouraging. So if you want to know more about that, you can check out our website. We'll put our website details along the bottom of the screen there, sego.co.uk. And on the website, you'll find lots of information about a variety of different things and also links to our different organisations' Facebook pages. So we would encourage you to go online and to look those up. Also during the week, uh, you may want to join yours truly uh, as uh, I run a little devotional program uh, once a week called Coffee with the Curate. Many of, you, many of you will know that I am a coffee lover, but I think more important in these days is the opportunity to study God's word and to reflect upon it. So you're also encouraged to join in with that as well. That's all the announcements that I want to highlight. You can find more information on our website and we would encourage you to check that out and return to that uh, often and regularly. Let's just take a few moments as we begin our service to collect our thoughts and to focus our eyes on Jesus. Let us pray. Amen. Your responses will be in white at the bottom of the screen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As well as being something of a, a special day for children this week, it is also Trinity Sunday and later in our service, Terence will be exploring the Trinity. But that idea of the Trinity forms our beginning introduction. So I encourage you to join with me. In mystery and grandeur, we see the face of God. In earthiness and the ordinary, we know the love of Christ. In heights and depths and light and death, the Spirit of God is moving among us. Let us praise God. 
And we praise God indeed. Uh, our first hymn this morning is the hymn Far and Near. Um, many of you will have seen over the last couple of weeks, we encourage you to record yourself and your family uh, and send it along to us so that we could include it in this video. But even if you haven't had that opportunity, we would encourage you to join along at home in this wonderful hymn, Far and Near. Wasn't that just great? I think it is so wonderful to be able to see so many faces, faces that we maybe haven't been able to see for a long time because of lockdown. And I think that's a great opportunity. And there'll be another song later on in our service where we'll see that. But thank you to everyone who took part in that. And also thank you to Rodney who pulled all of that together. We want to encourage you that when we have more opportunities for us to join in with those virtual congregational hymns to take part in that. It is encouraging to see so many faces and we want to uh, encourage you to be a part of that as well. We now come to the part of our service where we take an opportunity to say sorry to God. When I was a young boy and even now as a grown man, I would often say and think and do things that I knew were wrong and I often had to say sorry for those things. And saying sorry can be difficult Sometimes we don't want to say sorry because we're prideful or because we're still upset or annoyed. And yet saying sorry is such an important thing. In the Bible, it talks about a big word called reconciliation. And what that basically means is that we make amends, we make right the things that we, that we have gotten wrong, and we are brought back together with those who we have hurt in friendship and family once more. We can be reconciled to one another if we hurt or upset someone, we can say sorry. But more importantly, we're called through the gospel to be reconciled to God. And that way is made open to us by Jesus. So this morning, I want to encourage you, boys and girls, mummies and daddies, grannies and grandas, and everyone else, to just take a few moments to think about those things that you know you got wrong. The things that you said or thought or did that you know have hurt or upset others. To bring those before God and to take this opportunity to say sorry. So let's just take a few moments.
would encourage you to join with me in the parts that are in white. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. O God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And hear these words that remind us of God's forgiveness. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, Amelia and Isaac are going to come and play a piece of music from Psalm chapter 23, a well-known piece of scripture. And after that, Jamie is going to come and read God's word to us. chapter 28 verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain which Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Amelia, Isaac and Jamie for bringing those pieces to us. And isn't it great to see our young people involved in such a way in this service? Now we're going to have another virtual congregational song. Uh, this is a well, another well-known song, Our God is a Great Big God, and a very popular one amongst the fitness fanatics. Uh, there's lots of movement and activity. And I wonder, boys and girls, during this vid video, will you be able to spot yourself in it? Have a look and see if you can, and see who else you can spot. There's some great uh, big children involved as well in this video. And once again, we thank you all for being a part of this. After this song, Terence will come and bring some reflections to us.
Wow, that was super. Thank you very much to everyone who took part in singing that song for us. Our God is a great big God. We're going to be thinking about God during the sermon, the great big God that he is, and yet how he holds us in his hand. He is so special and he treats us as being special as well. But before we begin uh, thinking about that, we're going to pray together. Let us pray. Lord of God, we thank you that you're a great big God and yet you hold us all in your hands. Pray now that you would help us to learn more about you, to think about what the Bible says about you and how real you are to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now in singing, our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. I wonder, have you ever wondered, what does God look like? It's a big question, isn't it? And there, I'm sure as you think about that, there are lots of different things that you could say or things to illustrate what God looks like. But I thought a good idea would be to ask three different children from our church who are different ages to draw me some pictures about what God is like, just so that I would know, just in case I wasn't sure, and to help you to think what God looks like as well. So let's just see what they came up with. Wow, isn't that great? The boy who drew this one has drawn God and look at that lovely heart because God loves everyone and the sun shining because God's in the centre of the picture. And here we've got another picture. This time the girl who drew this has drawn a lovely picture. I think the face looks a wee bit like what we'd think Jesus is like. Lovely beard and hair. And look at all that sun radiating out of him. A wonderful picture of what God is like. And now in this final picture, which is by an older girl, we've got a wonderful scene, I think, of creation. Look at the lovely green of the earth and the flowers that are there. And then the picture of God. And right on the centre of him, it says, I love everybody. How important that message is that God's love is for everyone. It doesn't matter what they're like or where they're from. God loves us all. So thank you to our three artists today. Now, wasn't that just super? All of those different ideas of what God looks like. And I dare say, if you were to draw a picture as well, it probably would look a bit different than those three that we've had. Because none of us actually know what God looks like. But sometimes we have ideas and we think what he might look like. So when we want to know something about God, where do we turn to? Which book? That's right. The Bible. The Bible is our guide and it gives us lots of information about God, but sometimes it leaves questions unanswered as well. Sometimes there are as many questions that we don't get an answer to as questions that we do get an answer to. And when we ask that question, what does God look like? Often in the Bible, there isn't an awful lot of information. Even with Jesus, we don't actually know what he looked like. But what the Bible does tell us is what God is like, what his character is like, the way that he relates to people, the sort of things that he does, his nature of how he loves us and cares for us. He's the creator. He's the great big God who made all things, but he's also the God who holds us in his hands and who loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. 
So the Bible doesn't answer the question so much what does God look like, but it does tell us what God is like. And in church, sometimes we use words even that aren't found in the Bible to help us to describe God. And one of those words that we're thinking about today, being Trinity Sunday, is that word Trinity. You don't find it in the Bible, but it's a word that is used to explain what God is like. Trinity. Three persons in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Not three different gods, but one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. You know, I think that's a bit confusing, isn't it? And it often is. So let's see if we can maybe think of a way to try to break that down to make it a wee bit easier to understand. So let's start with me. I wonder what way you would describe me. Perhaps it's not good for me to hear some of the things that you might say, but just let's think of a couple of them. And there's a clue, perhaps you can see in this picture on the wall behind me. It's a strange photograph. It's a photograph that was taken lots of years ago, 27 years ago, when Alison and I got married. And here you can see Alison, she's the one in the dress. And I'm the one here standing beside her with the big hair. And so when we got married, Alison would have called me with lots of names like darling and my lovely and all these sorts of things. But basically Alison would refer to me as being her husband. Now, then after we were married for a while, we started to have children and the children wouldn't refer to me as their husband. I'm going to embarrass Hannah now because I've got a photograph here of when Hannah was quite young and with me and there we go. And when Hannah was going off to nursery like that, she would have called me daddy. So Terence is my name, but I'm known as Alison's husband and I'm known as Hannah's daddy. And in fact, not just Hannah's daddy, but now I'll embarrass all three of the girls. This was taken a few years back and you can see there the three girls. You can see Alison as well. And so to them, I would be daddy. So that's me. I'm Terence. I'm husband. I'm daddy. I'm also a brother. I've just got one brother called Brian. And so he would call me his brother. My mum and daddy are both dead, but I would have been known as their son. And in church, often people call me by my title as the rector. So there's one person, Terence. And yet sometimes I'm known in different ways, lots of different ways, in fact. But if we just narrowed it down to think of three, I'm known as husband, as father and as rector. Three different ways that people relate to me and think of me, but it's the same person, I'm Terence. Now we're going to move here from the living room out into the kitchen to look at the next couple of illustrations about God, helping us to think of him as one God, but in three different forms. So let's leave and go into the kitchen. So here we are now in the kitchen, uh, we've moved through and I'm going to think again about another illustration about one thing that comes in three different forms. I wonder can you guess what it is when I'm in a kitchen? Not sure? Well, come with me and you can see because it's something that we all have in our kitchens and here it is. I'm going to pour some water into a glass because if it's a hot day, isn't it lovely to get a drink of water? Mmm. Now, sometimes when you take water out of the tap, you think, goodness, it would be nice to make it a bit colder. And so into the water to help to make it cold, you might put some of this. And this is, that's right, ice. So the ice goes into the water. Now, what do you make ice from? Isn't it strange that ice, although it's something which is solid, is actually made from water. When you put it in the freezer and it freezes, it changes from being a liquid to being a solid. And it's the same thing. It's still water. But just like me, when I said I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a brother, I'm a rector. So with water, 
You can have liquid water, you can have frozen water which is called ice. But some days it's a bit cold and you think I'd love a nice hot drink. And what often do you put in hot drinks? You use one of these, of course, a kettle. You need an adult to do this, not a child. And when you boil the kettle, I'm going to hold down the button instead of letting it just stop for itself. Because when it comes to the boil, you start to see some steam coming out of the kettle. And then there's some water vapour as well. You might be able to see it or you might not. Very dangerous to put your hand over the spout. But that steam, which is like a gas, and so for water, you can have liquid water, you can have solid water, which is ice, or you can have boiling water, which is steam. It's all water. If you're in secondary school, you would learn that it's H2O, but it comes as water, ice, or steam. I wonder, is there another illustration about something which is in three parts? Well, I've got it here. No, it's not the knife and it's not the bowl. This time it's an egg. Because here's an egg and there are actually three parts in one egg. First of all, there's the shell on the outside and this is a nice brown one. Sometimes it's white or even speckly. But there's the egg shell. Now, if you crack the shell and if you're very careful in doing something like this, you can divide it. If you, maybe if you're going to make a nice pavlova or something like that. So you've got the shell, and the bit that you wouldn't use for the pavlova is this part. See the colour of it? It's yellow. And what's that called? It's called the egg yolk. So there's the egg shell, there's the egg yolk, and the bit that's in there that you would beat up to make the pavlova is called the egg white. So there's one egg, but it comes in three parts. The shell, the yolk, and the white. Now, we're going to move back to the other room for another illustration about God. One God, three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now we're back into the living room again and imagine me sitting at a piano. It's normally Alison that you expect to see here because I can't play the piano, but Alison can. But when we think about music, there's something that's a bit like God in that as well. We can think of the music book and all of those notes and words that are written on the page. There's a composer who from their mind decides what to put together to make a tune. And then there's someone who has to play it. Now I'm not very good at playing it but let's see if you can try to guess what this tune is. Jesus love is very wonderful. You can see why Alison plays it and not me. So there's the composer who puts the music together. Then there's the person who is directed by the composer and has to play all of the right notes. And when that's done properly, there's the wonderful music. Maybe not like my music, but wonderful music that you can't actually see. You can see the notes that the composer has put down. You can see the instrument being played, but you can't see the music. It's invisible. But boy, isn't it important. It touches our ears and sometimes our hearts and the music is wonderful. So music is like one piece in three parts put together by the composer, played by the instrumentalist. And then there's the invisible sound of the music. So there we are, we're back where we began in thinking about what God is like and through the Bible we learn that God is one, there's only one God, but he makes himself known to us as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It seems very confusing, but it's not really. Because as we've seen in all of those illustrations, often there's something which appears to be one, but actually it's known in a variety of different ways or there are different parts of it. And so with God, there's one and there's Father, Son and Holy Spirit. 
one in character and makes himself known in different ways. Do you know when we think of the Trinity, when we think of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, there are a couple of passages in the Bible where we can see those three persons almost together at the one time. For example, when we think when Jesus was baptised, we read that he went down into the water, that's Jesus the Son, and when he came up, there was something like a dove that came and descended upon him, who was the Holy Spirit. And then there was a voice from heaven who said, this is my son whom I love. And so that was the voice of the father. So the son being baptised, the Holy Spirit coming to embar him and the father declaring who he, who he was, the three parts of the Trinity. Now, when we think about the passage that Jamie read for us, right at the very end of Jesus's life, when he was going back to be with the Father in heaven, this is what he said. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so as Jesus was leaving the disciples, he gave them what we call here the Great Commission, a very important work to do, to go and to tell the whole world about God. God the Father who loves them so much, that he sent Jesus the Son to die on the cross bearing their sins and God the Holy Spirit to be with them to make the love of God real. So that's our message that we're to live by and to share with other people and in doing that to live the way Jesus wants us to. He said to obey everything that he had commanded us to do. And then that wonderful promise, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus is with us by his Holy Spirit. When we ask Jesus into our hearts for giving our sins, he comes by his Holy Spirit to be with us forever. To guide us each and every day in the love of God, changing us and making us more like Jesus and helping us to proclaim this most wonderful message. So let's go back to where we started. What is God like? We can try to draw what he's like, but we don't actually know what he looks like. But when we turn to the pages of the Bible, we learn so much about his character. The fact that he loves us, that he's committed to us, he's always there. No matter what's going on in our lives, he will never leave us or forsake us. And in the Bible, he has revealed himself as God the Father in heaven, who made all things. In his love, he sent Jesus, his Son, to live among us, to help us to see what God is like, God taking on human flesh, and then dying on the cross, taking our sins so that we could be forgiven. And then almost like the music, the Holy Spirit, the life of God comes like a wind, we can't see him, but we can see his effect in our lives as he changes us to make us more like Jesus. And that invisible spirit of God in our lives makes us aware inside that we are God's children. The promises of scripture that we are so special to God, we actually experience through the presence of God's Holy Spirit. So in this Trinity Sunday. Hopefully we understand something a bit more about God, the one God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We need to think about all three parts and how they work together with that common purpose of loving us, of saving us and transforming us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the Bible that is the book that helps us to find out more about you and what you are like. We thank you for what we've thought about today, that you are one God, the Trinity, that you come to us as Father, as Son and Holy Spirit. So much mystery, so much that we can't understand, but help us to hold on to those things that we do understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Following on from the sermon, we're going to sing a very simple song about the Trinity, God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. There are some very simple actions to the words. When we sing either Father, Jesus or Spirit, we adore you, we put our hands up. And then when we say we lay our lives before you, we put them down. And then how we love you, we put them out. And in doing that, we make the sign of the cross, which is, of course, the sign of God's love. God the Trinity loving us, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And our response to lay down our lives in love before him. So please try to join in with the actions. For leading us in that wonderful hymn. Now the Dunlop family will come and lead us in our prayers. Dear God, please keep all the doctors and nurses safe and all people who have coronavirus. Keep all my friends and family safe too. Amen. Dear God, I will keep all my friends and teachers and keep all the rest of the people even have a cold fast, um, like people who's in the hospital. Amen. Lord God, we pray today for those who are sick and infected with COVID-19 and other illnesses. Heal and help them and, co and contain the spread of the infection. We pray for the vulnerable among us, the elderly and those suffering with chronic diseases. Lord, for the young and the strong, Within society, we pray that you will give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading the disease, inspire them to stop and think and to help. Lord, we pray for our government that they can help to allocate all the necessary resources for combating this pandemic and keep them safe by doing so. We pray for those working in labs and hospitals trying to understand this awful disease so that they can develop a vaccine to protect us and future generations going forward. We think especially at this time of all those suffering with mental health issues who feel isolated, not just now during lockdown, but every day. Give them the strength to seek help and to turn to you. Lord, we pray that you will bring comfort to all those whose jobs are now uncertain due to the current climate and provide them with the help and guidance to face what lies ahead. Dear God, we pray for all the families of young children, many of whom do not fully understand the enormity of it, what is going on. They miss their friends and teachers and the structure of school life. Lord, give them and their parents the strength and patience to get through this time together and to make happy memories for the future. We also think of those parents who have to go to work and leave their children with others at this scary time. Help them to trust in you and to remember that you hold us all in your hands. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all of our frontline health care workers in hospitals, nursing homes and in the community who are risking their lives daily to help treat and protect our patients. Help them all to stay clear-minded in the midst of all the panic and uncertainty. We pray for all key workers, from shop workers and postmen and women, to those who continue to work behind the scenes to provide some sort of normality for us all. We think of America and all of the unrest that is going on there presently. 
have the authorities and government to bring peace and to establish a society where we are all treated equally regardless of our skin colour. God, we trust in you. Please help us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus who laid down his life for the sake of love. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you to the Dunlop family for leading us in those prayers. Now our final hymn this morning is the hymn number 321, Holy, Holy, Holy. A hymn that helps us to reflect on God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So please join us as we sing hymn 321.
As our service draws to a close this morning, I want to thank all of those who were involved in the service today. I also want to give a special thanks to those who are involved behind the scenes in all the production of our services. We're greatly indebted to all the hard work that goes on into making our services each week. And finally, I want to thank all of you for joining with us this morning. And I pray that this morning's service has been an encouragement and a blessing to you. Speaking of blessings, at the end of our service, we're going to show a video called The Irish Blessing. And The Irish Blessing is a musical piece using the words of Be Thou My Vision. And it's a collaboration between over 300 different churches and Christian organisations and representatives from them. It really is a blessing for the island of Ireland and an encouragement to all the work of our key workers at this time. So we leave that with you in the hope that it will encourage and bless you as well. So some words of blessing as we finish. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
The Lord met the light of his face, and the goodness of his heart to be bright upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. وباركك الرب ويحرسك Niech się Pan błogosławi i strzeże. Paka se lumineze faca lui peste te. Fechoneka. Jehova, pirumokam nindemelu yarti. Nenaka samad. Kosi fuini alafia.